So what we're going to talk about now is going to be how we make and break these macromolecules that this chapter is all about. So macro means big. So these are going to be really big molecules that are made of repeating subunits. Now before we get too deep into that, we want to talk about something called isomers. So iso actually means equal and so are same. And so when we look at this picture here at the top, these are showing isomers right here. This is actually a structural isomer. And so what we're talking about is if we counted up how many carbons there are and how many hydrogens there are, the molecular formula of this would be C5H12. If we look over here though, same thing, C5H12. So if I just wrote C5H12, you wouldn't exactly know what it looks like as a molecule. So these are two possibilities of how it could look, and so we call those structural isomers. Down here, these are called stereoisomers, and the reason for that is because if you look up here, this is a linear carbon skeleton, and this one is branching. And here you have just two linear carbon skeletons, but the, where, where the things are hanging off are different. So we call those stereoisomers. Okay, so structural, stereo. Okay, so moving on, let's talk about these macromolecules. Big, big, big complex assemblies, and they're going to be made of repeating subunits. So we call macromolecules polymers, poly means many, and they're made of single parts called monomers, mono means one. And so they're going to be linked together by covalent bonds, that's the type of bond, remember that's where they share electrons, and um, this is going to happen through a couple of processes. So if we are going to form a macromolecule, we're going to use what's called a dehydration synthesis. And I think this is easiest if you see this right here. So these that have the numbers are going to be monomers. And every monomer looks like this one right here originally. So it's got a hydrogen coming off of one side and an OH coming off of the other. And so what happens in a dehydration synthesis? Let's think about what that word means. Dehydration means losing water. Synthesis means making something, right? So if we look and we want to join this monomer onto this long polymer, what we can do is remove the OH from here and remove the H from here and together that forms water. So we've removed a water and now these two can bond together and there's that fourth monomer on this chain. Okay, so this is the process of making macromolecules. It's going to be called a dehydration synthesis. So let's go over that one more time. You've got an H on this side. OH over here. If we remove those, that's going to fuse to form water. That's where the dehydration part comes from. And then that allows these two to get linked together, and there's our fourth link on this polymer. So this can keep happening over and over and over again and make this huge long chain. That's how we make er, polymers from these monomers. Okay, so that's going to be making a macromolecule. So <clears throat> the question is, when would we do that? Well, let's say that you ate a really big steak, nice tasty steak full of protein. Protein is a polymer. P protein is one of those macromolecules. And let's say that you want to build muscle mass. Well, your muscles are made of protein as well. Now, if you eat that steak, that's going to help you to make that muscle protein. However, if you were to take that steak and put it on your bicep, that wouldn't work, right? Because it's a different setup. So what you have to do is actually break down that steak and break down those polymers into monomers, and then you can rearrange those monomers to make your specific type of muscle protein. So that would be when you would use a dehydration synthesis, is you've got all these little monomers floating around, and then you can add them together, and that can make your muscle mass. Okay. Now the opposite of that is going to be what's called a hydrolysis. Once again, let's look at this word. Hydro is talking about water. Lysis means breaking apart. Okay, so here is our long polymer, and let's say we want to break it into separate pieces. This would be what would be happening when you ate the steak, right? So you've eaten the steak, you're chewing it up, and then you're going to have digestive enzymes that are going to do exactly this. So you want to get these into monomers. Well, what's going to happen is it's just going to go in the opposite direction that the previous one goes in. So you've got water, you're going to add it, that's where the hydro comes from, 
And what's going to happen is you're going to add an H over here, an OH over here, and so you've caused it to break apart or lyse. So it's just the opposite order of a dehydration synthesis. So if we're going to put this in real terms again, let's say you ate your steak, you're chewing it up, you digest it, enzymes are going to come along and allow this hydrolysis pro process to happen to those proteins that you just ate. And what it's going to do is it's going to break it down, it's going to do it to all of these, and break it down into amino acids, which are these building blocks that would be what these little circles are. And then what's going to happen is your body is going to say, oh, wow, you're lifting weights, we need to make more muscle. So what it's going to do is rearrange those amino acids or those monomers, and it's going to do that using dehydration synthesis, and this would be like your muscle protein that you've created. Okay, so that's a really tough one. Definitely we'll go over that more and more and more, but that's going to be a really important process that we want to make sure we understand. So this is one of those reasons why water is so important in our systems, right? This is also a reason why um, we create water as a byproduct, right? We can sweat it out. We can pee it out. Um, so the next time you go to the bathroom, you can think about Bio 111 and how it might be the result of a dehydration synthesis. You're welcome. Okay, <clears throat> let's go back to our um, notes here. All right, so I think I already mentioned enzymes are going to be the ones that are going to drive a dehydration synthesis and a hydrolysis to happen. And the reason that's important for me to point out is let's go over those rules again about how many bonds things like to have. So here, this hydrogen has one bond, right? So that's happy. This hydrogen over here is bonded to this oxygen, so it's got one bond. And remember, we said oxygen likes to have two. And if we look, there is one on this side of the oxygen and one on this side, so the oxygen is happy. So there's really no reason for these to come together to form water. They wouldn't just break off like that. So you actually will have an enzyme, which is a catalyst, that's going to come in and actually cause those to come off. And then you've got these open bonds here, and that's what's going to make this bond form here. So enzymes are really, really integral in that kind of process. So in the next part, we're going to talk about the different types of macromolecules and how they form and what they're used for.